There's only one thing in his mind. And we can leave that town behind. You had to give up the guitar to find a new life. Much to his band's dismay. to find a new way. His name is Trey. How's it going, guys? Trey Clark here, as I usually am. And I'm going to try and squeeze a lot of stuff into just a few minutes here. And uh, the thing that's really gotten to me here is that is that everyone has gone dark that was willing to call me every name in the book very recently. No one will give me their number, and I'll explain what that means. Okay, I was talking about the, the inverse square law, which this is the smoking gun to every, you can look in any direction and suddenly go, we've got a problem. And I started out by talking about, okay, if the moon is one lumen, which roughly it is on a really bright full moon, somewhere in there, how bright is the moon once you get there? Okay, and photographers really had to figure this out uh, with, you know, actual doing the math to set their exposure settings uh, to, because we now we have everything's digital, so you, it figures it out for you. So, but before it wasn't. So you get into the you don't know if you're right or not until you got into uh, to exposing the film, and then uh, you get really good at the math. You know, at, your, at making your readings match your settings. So, what happens when you close in on the moon? The inverse square law is basically if this is your source of any kind of radiating energy okay that's light heat radiation which is heat or whatever uh now they're going to tell you light is both a particle and a wave to explain all this stuff away bullshit so if you're 10 feet away you close it in to five okay cut it in half if this is 10 degrees suddenly this is 100 degrees now this isn't a vacuum okay this does not work like where there's atmosphere and stuff because or where the atmosphere is dense because the whatever's in the air, especially moisture, will incubate things and and do that. So when we're going to figure this out, we're taking the Earth's atmosphere out of that. But in a vacuum, cut it in half, 10 degrees becomes 100. Cut that in half, then it becomes 10,000. Okay? Like that. Now, obviously, if it feels 10 degrees from here and you close in, but in a vacuum, that's how it works. So the sun... All that light travels 93 million miles in a vacuum, okay? So how does it how does it transfer as a wave? They'll tell you because, well, it's also a particle. Well, how's that? How's it both? Well, it depends on if you observe it or not. There's this thing called the double slit experiment to where if you observe it, then it's a particle. If you don't observe it, it's a wave or something like that. And, uh, or I think it's vice versa. So I'm like, so the sun's getting here both as a particle in a wave, whether I observe it or not, is what makes it real, right? That's the kind of nonsense they get to on the quantum level. So I, my first question was, well, I'm observing it now. Is it still both? No, it's functioning as one, but until, so that's, that's where the sleight of hand stuff goes. So we're going to erase the entire uh, worrisomeness of the Earth's atmosphere. We're going to go out into the vacuum of space. Now on the surface of the moon, we know that uh, NASA tells us that it's 250 degrees in the light, negative 250 degrees, and this is Fahrenheit, outside the light. So, is uh, and it's instant because there's no slow transfer of energy because there's no atmosphere to kind of dissipate. It's instant. So it's interesting that all these, these parts uh, act so well and that these visors and cameras can operate taking these great pictures at like 1.3 million times as bright as it is here uh, and no one has ever given me their number and I'll explain what that means when I say that so if you close in for 93 million miles at 250 degrees from the moon and I know it's a little bit further but let's say it's on the other side of the earth so it's even closer so we'll we'll have some uh, some leeway so you get close in by 0.5 you're now at 46 million five hundred thousand okay so if you square 250, you get 62,500 degrees. 
just by getting half of the way there. You start squaring things exponentially, it gets crazy really fast. And so, it's a what? The sun is supposed to be a million degrees Celsius on the surface, around the corona, which is where we get our, our, uh, our radiation, all our heat and our light. So a million degrees, so it's got a 212 million degrees, uh, million degrees Fahrenheit. All right, water boils at 212. So we'll use the same factoring. So cut that 46.5 million uh, miles in half. You, now you're at 23,250,000 uh, miles away. And you are now at 3.9, <laughs> Over 3.9 billion degrees. Let me just double check that math because even that seems weird for me. So, so let's say 250 times 250. 250 times 250. 62,500. That's it, 46 million miles away, 46.5. So let's square 62,000. 500 yeah now that's when I have to start turning my <laughs> turn it this way three billion nine hundred and six that nine hundred six million two hundred fifty thousand degrees how do you explain this the way they they do it is they say well everything just kind of acts different on the quantum level no we never seen an atom we don't know that it's all bull stuff okay they're saying they're trying to they knew that this was going to be a problem and if it's a law then it's a law it's a law of physics that's why quantum physics it's they just make it this mystery everything changes at the quantum level it all has to do with it makes it absolutely no sense that it can be a hundred degree day outside with the sun 93 million miles away Makes no sense at all. Makes no sense at all that the moon is one lumen here and we, we can go there and take pictures just like we do on Earth. It makes no sense. And what they're going to do is try and shove this hogwash down our throat and say, well, but that's quantum level stuff. And it's, you know, so then they make it even more difficult. Another chalkboard, another mile of chalkboards or whatever. And they still don't know what they're talking about. They still can't observe it. They still can't recreate it. And they're going to trick you into thinking that, yes, Water, I mean, a wave has to have a medium, okay? A wave is, is radiated. That's what it is. It's just a transfer through a medium until it reaches a certain point, and it dissipates at the same rate. So, in, in no, water's going to have factors because currents are coming, but that's kind of how the ether is supposed to work. And er, enter Einstein with being able, hey, we need you to uh, get rid of this whole ether thing, make sure the earth is spinning. And uh, so now if I drop this pencil, according to Einstein, I've just bent space and time. And someone got a grant somewhere, I'm sure. So it just, I mean, just closing it in by a fact, by closing it in by half, two times, we're at 3.9 billion degrees. Of course it's not 3.9 billion degrees. But they had to figure something out. This is the smoking gun, okay? So this is what I want you to do. Instead of trying to go through this like I am with you, I'm just arming you with some information to look into yourself. As we all say, do your own research because I could absolutely be wrong, okay? But I've been doing this for three years now and every time I bring it up to anyone who makes their living in this kind of stuff, they don't ever want to talk to me anymore, period. They disappear off of threads. They go from telling me I'm a moron to being really quiet. Not at this point. At this point, they'll, be, they'll say stuff like, well, the moon has a reflective surface or whatever. And I'm like, the reflective surface doesn't mean anything. It's just what is your light, what is your light source? A reflection is a light source. You're telling me you read a reflections uh, reading different than the what it's reflecting off of? No, that's not how it works. So, and I would suggest not even saying... And, and these are questions. I want you to, a lot of us are in these formats where we kind of do these debates. It's very similar in all of them. If you bring up anything that has to do with uh, maybe it's not what they say it is, they'll call you every name in the book. And I'm used to it by now. As a matter of fact, 
I've got a nice little collection I'm going to make a uh, presentation with. But those, you're an idiot, you're a moron, you're all this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, what about the inverse square law? And they'll say something stupid like, well, you know, that, that's space and it's supposed to be a particle on a wave. No, it's not. Uh, okay. And then you can just say, okay, how bright is the moon? How bright is it? Just your number. You, I know you can tell me I'm wrong in all the ways that I don't know how, that I'm not qualified to figure it out. But if you know that I'm wrong, then you must know the answer. There's no, you can't have it both ways. You're wrong, but I don't know what it is either. And I'm so sure about that that I'll call you names publicly in writing and all that kind of stuff. So what is the number of the, of, of the brightness of the moon? How bright is it in lumens? They start multiplying it out. They have to use the inverse square law. They don't get to use their own law and do the same thing with the heat from the moon to the sun at 250 degrees. Using the inverse square law, how bright is it? And let them go through the whole particle and a wave nonsense. That's not what you're looking for. You're not trying to convince them, but they'll be quiet really fast because the numbers get so crazy. Sorry. The numbers get so insane so quickly that once you get onto the moon, we don't have cameras that can take pictures at a million degrees brighter than here or a million times brighter than our perspective on Earth. Well, we weren't using it. It was just a regular Hasselblad 500 EL, I think, you know, where no manuals. I mean, everything was manual on it. It was a preset F-stop. So everything was set in a very earthly setting. So it's the same thing with heat. Heat is radiated. And somehow they're saying heat. Now, they're not saying heat is both a particle and a wave. But they will now. If you start, they'll, they'll dance around it. How is all that heat transferring through a vacuum? How does that happen? If there's no medium, how is there a wave? And just because you're not observing it doesn't get it to turn into a particle, okay? That's nonsense. Because, why? Because all I have to do is observe it, and it should turn back into, you know, I should be able to reverse it, but if I'm not observing it, then my back, I got in an argument with someone about this. Like, yeah, but your, your senses are observing it or observing the heat and all this stuff. And it, then you get into the simulation theory and all this stuff. If you want to get into that, actually, it makes sense then, the, the simulation theory, but you got to be all in on that. You can't just kind of dance around it. But just ask them, how, how bright is the moon? How many lumens? If it's one here, and if they say, well, you don't know it's one, okay, pick a number. It's around one on a bright full moon. You pick your number. Call it 0.5 lumens. Using the inverse squared law, how bright is it? Give me your number. And they're going to have to come up with something that makes them look even more foolish than any conspiracy theorist there is. And wait till you get to the, how hot is the sun actually for us to receive it in a vacuum at 250 degrees on the moon. This is falling apart, okay? All of it is. And, and this is where everyone is, is either going to turn into an expert in quantum physics or they're going to go away. They will literally quit talking to you. I've yet to have one person in three years give me their number, not their way to figure it out. They'll send you a link or they'll send you a chart and they'll send shit that doesn't even matter like a Pumbras and whatever. It's the same with shadows too. If it's a single light source, uh, it exponentially goes uh, the same way. So you have a problem there with, uh, with uh, eclipses. We have a big problem. <laughs> Not 40,000. 6,000? Yeah, I think that's right. What, one-fourth? So is the Earth, 25,000. Mm. It's more around there. Uh, so we have a really big problem unless you are going to be willing to publicly toss a law of physics. Gravity itself is built, Newton's law of gravity is built around the inverse square law, okay? And it has, and they get into the vector points and all this stuff, and, but if it's a perfect sphere, 
then the inverse square law, the closer they get, you know, in relation to their size, the closer they attract. This is not, I mean, everything is built on this. So they don't, you don't get to go, well, but if it's a cloudy day or if there's high whatever. No, that's not, if it was that easy to mess it up, the, the universe would fall apart pretty quickly, I'm guessing. So ask them their number. What is your number? Okay, starting with 250 degrees and something is 93 million miles away, how hot is the surface of that in order for it to radiate 250 degrees over the, the, the distance of 93 million miles? You're going to see some really, really weird shit happen to who you're talking to, especially if they make their living on this. They're going to get mad at you. They're going to go away. They're going to say like, eh, I don't, you know. They're going to brush you off, but they will not give you a number. And I think that's very interesting. It should be easy to do. It's a law of physics. It's eighth grade math. All you're doing is, if you know how to multiply something times itself and divide in half, if you can do those two things, you can figure out any of this stuff. Okay? This is a smoking gun. This is it. Because you can apply it to anything. Beware of, well, particle physics and all that kind of stuff. No, they haven't proven any of that stuff. You show me where they can fire an electron. We can't even see an electron. How do you fire an electron? You can fire light, you know, which they will say is a photon, unless you observe it, you know, that type of thing. No, it's all just sleight of hand. It's all just, it's, it's, it's nothing. There's no way. There's no way that you can dodge Newton's second, or uh, the, the law of, not law of thermodynamics, the inverse squared law. You can't dodge it. If you do, then you are claiming to have done something no one else has ever been able to do. That's why it's a law. If you claim that you know that you can disprove that in this area, this law of physics does not take place, then you've disproven a law and you should have your name in the record books. So, uh, hope y'all are good. What is your number? What is your number? And y'all do it. You sit down with the, learn about the inverse square law, learn the distances, really easy. close it in half. And, and uh, whatever reading you're using, whether it's heat or whatever, uh, square it. And then cut it in half, square it again. Cut it in half, square it again. It gets really crazy. And no one really wants to touch this one. And it'll be interesting if they do. I'm sure someone's going to come in. And when they do, every time they come in, they go, Trey, you know, you're not considering these factors. Okay. You consider all of your factors, list them, and give me your number. What is your number? What is your number? Never once. Out of probably 50 times in three years. Cheers, guys. Hope you're well. smoke when I dream. I only drink when it hurts. It only hurts every day. And every day it gets worse. Worse is being alone. At least alone I can think. Begging's best with smoke. Only smoke when I dream. Smoke, oh, smoke when I drink.